Hi, today we're going to be looking at this JBC solder feeder once again and for those that missed my previous video on it I will put a link up here but briefly the idea is that um, you have this handpiece and this unit will feed solder down the tube and poke it out the end and basically you can use this button or a foot pedal to control solder coming out the end uh, potentially to make dispensing easier but also to make sure you um, apply a measured amount of solder to every solder joint and in the last video I had a lot of trouble with this unit. Basically it worked okay with one millimeter solder which is the um, guide kit that it came with but anything less than that it kept getting um, stuck in the mechanism at the top and meant that it didn't actually work. I could not get it to work with the 0.5 millimeter solder wire. So the way this unit is supposed to work is you have your reel of solder at the back here and you feed the wire through this ferrule here into these rollers here and these are the drive rollers so there's a motor on this side and this one is freewheeling but that just sets the gap for the solder wire to go through and at this point we've gone from pulling solder wire which is absolutely fine to pushing solder wire through the entire rest of the system and when we're talking about really really fine solder wire like this 0.5 millimeter solder wire um, any kind of resistance will just cause that wire to buckle uh, at any opportunity here and as a lot of people mentioned in things like 3d printers after the drive rollers you completely contain the filament in the case of 3d printers with um, tubing or whatever else to stop it having that ability to crumple and then get stuck in the mechanism but we've got quite a few areas here that are open and that's where we were seeing the solder wire getting bunched up so the solder wire goes through this little ferrule again and then through these two rollers here, and this is potentially where the problem lies. So here, uh, we've got a roller that is attached to an encoder to make sure that the solder wire is being fed through. And then this is uh, like a tension roller to make sure it gets pressed up against there. And what JBC have said and what they've supplied um, is a replacement spring for this, because this one apparently is applying too much pressure for the system and then basically fine solder wires get gummed up in here. And one thing I did notice when I was feeding solder wire through this, at least with the 0.7mm solder, if I held this open, I was able to get the solder wire all the way through to the end. Um, so potentially this will, be, this will fix it. Now one observation, this spring offers significantly less tension on this roller. Uh, there was quite a lot of force here before, now it's barely applying any force whatsoever. So perhaps this will work. Let's try and feed some solder wire through the system. And just to show you, we're using lead-free solder here, 0.5 millimeter lead-free. One concern was that uh, lead solder was just too soft for this, so I'm making sure we're using lead-free here. So we can feed it through. And then we just need to go into the menu. Well, it's got stuck already. Might snip the end off at an angle to try and make it a bit pointier. Try and get it absolutely straight. No, stuck again. See, it's not even making it through this ferrule here, and we've snapped the wire. And success. And there we go, we have actually made it through. Yeah, and it does appear to be repeatable. It was failing pretty quick with the 0 0.7 uh, once we fed it through. So perhaps that is all that's needed. But I'm not entirely convinced about this part here. I've had many times where I've struggled to get the solder wire through it, and it seems to be an easy place for the wire to get crumpled. So I actually designed an alternate part in FreeCAD and you can see it's got a tapered entrance, it's got a 0.55mm hole right through the centre and the other thing about this one is it's quite a lot longer 
to try and constrain that path of solder through the unit. So basically the drive rollers are right here, right up against here, just a very small gap. And similarly, the encoder and the tension roller are right up against here. So if the wire buckles, it really shouldn't happen here or uh, just before the rollers. If anywhere, it's going to be where it's easily accessible after all of the rollers. And that's where our sponsor for today's video, PCBWay, come in. And most of you will know them for their PCB fabrication facilities, PCB assembly, and also 3D printing. But today, we've got some parts that have been CNC machined. And here they are. This is two of those ferrules that I've had made. One of them in aluminium and one of them in PTFE, which I thought was quite interesting because uh, with the PTFE, we should get that self-lubricating property and it should really help the solder glide through it. So we're going to try and install these into this and see if it at least improves the uh, feeding the solder wire through in the first place, but hopefully uh, it just prevents any chance of that wire buckling uh, around this mechanism here. So you saw there actually fed through first time, which I'm quite happy with because uh, even when I had this roller open in the past, uh, it was always getting caught up in here because basically as it goes through these rollers, there's kind of a natural curvature of the solder. It goes through and then it wants to lead off to one side. And because the ferrule that JBC designed started over here, by the time the solder wire got to there, it was already curled off to the side and it was always going to get caught up inside the ferrule uh, and then uh, cause a blockage. But now we're catching it right as it comes through the roller uh, and making sure that there's nowhere it can go before it gets to this roller here. So this seems to work much better. And I did have it made in aluminium, but I think PTFE is actually the best choice here because it should um, allow the lowest friction. And I think the tubing to the handpiece is also lined with PTFE or something like that. It's not a rubber tube. So we shouldn't really have much resistance uh, through that part here. It looks like it was just this roller that was causing a problem. So I think we've got a successful solution now. So if you want some parts made by CNC, you can go to the PCBWay website, click on CNC and 3D printing, and then you can upload your step file here. And I picked PTFE as the material. I also made it in aluminium. You can pick surface finishes. Now this isn't for all materials. Obviously, um, spray painting PTFE is probably not going to work, uh, but there's various options here, um, and you get your pricing here, $41. So certainly not the cheapest, but it does go down if you get more than one item made. I just wanted a one-off because I wasn't even sure if it was going to fit in the design. Uh, you can also pick some of the options here, like the surface finish, uh, whether you need specific type tolerances on certain parts, and then literally you just uh, click Submit Request, and then they do a DFM type analysis and let you know whether your design is manufacturable and then basically it gets made and I got mine within a week and um, you've seen the result that we've got made here. So here is the aluminium part and this was made using the roughest surface finish. I didn't have any specific requirements for a finer surface finish but I'm assuming that they made this with a CNC lathe and I designed it with that in mind so making sure everything was concentric around the centre point uh, and that there weren't any uh, parts that would need special machining techniques to keep the cost down. You can see on this side here is the taper going in, and then on this side you can see the 0.55mm hole all the way through, and this seems to have done the job quite nicely. So a really nice facility there if you don't have um, CNC machinery or a metal lathe at home, you can get them made at PCB Way. So it looks like we've got a working system now, thankfully, because as you could tell at the end of the previous video, I was pretty annoyed with this system. It costs quite a lot of money, and also someone highlighted that it's gone up in price now, so it's even more imperative that this type of system should work first time. And it does leave a few questions about the supply chain, because uh, although Kaisertech uh, delivered this item to me, 
it was shipped from JBC to Kaiser Tech and then from Kaiser Tech to me the next day. So the whole time we were waiting for this unit, it was because uh, we were waiting for it from JBC. And this modification supposedly dates back from March and I didn't get the unit until September. So they had a long time to pick up the serial numbers of the units that hadn't had the mod and then modify them before shipping them out. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't. But I think the modification of the spring and my uh, Teflon ferrule in there should now mean we get a system that doesn't jam up at all. And certainly, I've not been able to get it to fail. It was failing all the time, even with the 0.7mm solder last time. And it seems to be pretty consistent now so I'm quite happy with that. Now one modification I do need to make is get a foot pedal uh, because this button is almost impossible to use uh, because when you press this you end up moving the entire handpiece and you miss the solder joint and someone in the previous video said perhaps I'm using it wrong perhaps you're supposed to pre-feed the solder wire and then feed it into the joint then pre-feed the solder wire and feed it into the next joint uh, but that doesn't make sense because this unit has the ability to do solder feed profiles if you remember there were three steps so you could uh, dispense say five millimeters at one speed then 10 millimeter at another speed and then five millimeters to finish off and the only way that would work is if you were holding it over the solder joint and you press the button and let it do its thing you wouldn't be able to pre-feed uh, those profiles in and also it doesn't line up with the video that JBC themselves have made. Uh, in terms of <laughs> hobbyist use, certainly I don't think it really has a place for hobbyists unless uh, you want something to experiment with. This is more designed for production use or you can use it with the solder robot where it makes a lot of sense. Um, but I thought it'd be quite nice to use if it had worked properly. Uh, so I'm going to give it a, a fair chance now and give it some testing and see how I get on with it. So a big thank you to PCV Wave for sponsoring this video and providing those ferrules. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters, and until next time, thanks for watching.